Welcome to Toffee TV. Everton have signed another player. Oof. It's John Philippe Gabarman. 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 I hope you like Gabarman too. I can't take credit for that. Someone on Twitter. Trevor McKinley, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. yeah. The Pave brought, brought it. The Pave brought There you go. Brought his uh, I don't know whether I'll catch on. It does sound a bit like. John Philippe, come on! Oh, I've got a song for him. <laughs> Tremendous player, by Tremendous the way. Tremendous player, by the way. Oh, uh, he'll never sing the Gamma no. song ever again. That's no, sad. he won't. It's a sad day. But uh, John Philippe Gabarman brought in as a replacement for Drisha Garner. Yeah. Fabulous player, by the way. Fabulous player. Um, I mean, what are your thoughts on on the fact that Everton have moved quite swiftly? I, I mean, I, listen, I can't honestly sit here hand on heart saying I know loads about this player. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know. This seems to be the name that was identified straight away. As mm. soon as in the last week or so, when it looked like Paris Saint Germain were coming back for Ghana, and, and obviously ultimately did, mm. this was the name straight away that we looked like we wanted. There was, there was talk saying that Everton weren't going to s- sell Ghana till we had a replacement mm. in. So that's happened quite quite swiftly. Mm. This is the player they've wanted. The fee seems um, reasonable. Mm-hmm. The player, I imagine, has got the attribute or certainly can grow into the attributes that Ghana had and maybe a little bit more. So, all you can do is trust again. It's mm-hmm. trust, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, and that's all you can go with. Some players, when you sign them straight away, you'll know a lot about them because they've either played in the Premier League or played in the Champions League. But this guy has been just a little bit under the radar a mm-hmm. little bit. But, you know, when we bought Ghana, we bought him from Aston Villa. He played in the Premier League, been relegated to, with them, and a, a lot of us were like, "I don't remember him." Po-. So <laughs> playing against so Russia. For for me, I'm just glad that we've done our business, you know, obviously swiftly, swiftly, and got it done. And and um, let's hope the lad can come in and, and do the job. He's a good athlete, big, um, good range of passion on him. He's a little bit more progressive with the ball than, than what Garner is. Okay. Garner will shut things down a little bit better than he will, but he can grow into that. But uh, talking to Andy about him as well when we were discussing him on a previous video, it, his, his positional centre is quite good. He can play centre-back as well, and he's played for the Ivory Coast at centre-back. So, and right-back as well. But oh, that, I mean, that's... So they, so we're getting a player who, who is quite adaptable as well, I think, which is always appealing, I think. And he, David Moyes was great at yeah. having a player who could fill in a couple of positions. But he's had a great day, he's 23, he's not till 24 till late in the year. And I think having, again, a physical presence in the midfield, when you think of our midfield a few years ago, like Tom Cleverley in it and people like that, it, it, they were all of like my size, basically. You get bullied when you go to yeah. teams like Watford and Palace, who are big units. Yeah. Even Liverpool now are big and... Yeah. You know, but you look at our midfield now it's with him in it and Andre Gomez and Gilfie's not exactly small and you've got Michael Keane and Yeri Mina, Dominic Calvert-Lewin yeah. when he's in there, with Charles. They're all big lads and it, it means that when them games when it's a battle, mm. you're not physically but, overcome. But, but also though, just on that, mm. in tight games when it might take a set piece either way, yeah. if you've got players in the box that can keep the ball alive or mm. can at the other end clear the ball, yeah, yeah. that's it. I mean, we've seen that in the last... You know the last few games of the season. Mm. You know Manchester United, Arsenal, how important those throw-ins were. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a really been. I mean, uh, and that's where we've, you know, players like Tom Davies suffers because because of the stay size. Yeah. And when yeah. you know when you see as soon as Gomez came in, and we seen him against Crystal Palace, suddenly having someone with a bit of a stature who can hold players off. Mm. That that's so important. Especially, well, I think you've got to be quick if you're not big. Well, especially in the Premier League where you don't really get that. You know that time as such, mm. especially in the midfield area. The first thing you've got to do is, protect is get the ball, protect yeah. the ball, and that's where players like Davy Class and suffered. Where yeah. they they wanted that extra second maybe to get used to the Premier League, but mm. couldn't get couldn't earn that second by getting in. So coming in and having that physical stature is a really important thing in the Premier League. So his age is really important as well. You know. Listen, he mightn't come in and do exactly what Garner done because no. you know Garner was the best in the league yeah, at what fantastic. he did. You know his numbers say that. I mean, other people can throw names at, at us, but for what he did and the job he did was hugely important. Was the so. only player to complete over a hundred tackles in three seasons he played mm. for Everton, and, and he wasn't and someone who gave cancer. Wasn't someone who got booked a lot either. No, he no, was no. very disciplined as well. So mm. I think you know. But fact- this this lad's played ninety five games. You know, thirty one, thirty one, thirty three. That's very similar to what. 
Ghana. Yeah, in, <laughs> in the field show yeah. for it for Mainz. She started off at Lens mm. and their B team went into their first team and went over to Germany. So it's a lad who plays in that position and and, and his numbers stack up. Yeah. Is that how many games he plays and his discipline is quite good. He's obviously physically bigger than what Ghana yeah. is. So you know, it looks as though we're getting someone who's uh, who's along the same lines as Ghana. Again, represented France at a young age, but then moved to the Ivory, yeah. you know, went and represented Ivory Coast to his parents and stuff. So he's played, you know, for Ivory Coast, like you say, centre mid, yeah. centre back. I, I do think, though, that having the, the ability to play centre back and right back is yeah. hugely important. I'm not saying, you know, it, you, you, want, you want a player to go in those roles, but having someone in the squad. That you can say, even Jordan again. Yeah. You know, if if you get an injury and you want, mm. you need to, you know, if you've made already made all your subs mm. and you're looking around, going, well, who can play in that position? And suddenly you're having to shuffle people around. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 huge importance, and I, I think we've mentioned this before. It's something that's actually gone out of football since the seven subs, subs rules yeah, come yeah. in, or for some countries they have like you know literally everyone. everyone's a mm. sub, or you know everyone who's who's available. So that's gone out of the window. But having those players on the bench on the pitch who can play a couple of roles mm-hmm. it does mean that it frees places up in your squad where one minute you're looking at the squad thing and it's a bit barren but if you've got players you can play a couple of positions it does make a difference I think that I'm, I'm, you know something I know we speak about it we have spoken about it before where Moyes really did have those plays it's not something you want to rely on no but it's good that you've got it got it but the, the other thing as well is that we're trying to we're trying to trim a squad yeah. a bloated squad on big money and stuff so if you're starting to pull them numbers down but yet you've still got that player that can do a couple of them roles it negates the need to keep people hanging around because you might need a backup and that's where you know, and if you've got a couple of those players so say you've got a, well, we've got Delph haven't that's we that's what I'm saying so you can have you could say if we were desperate for a right back you could go and play right back and then mm. Delph could go into midfield, midfield or vice and suddenly so, yeah. you've got you have got those options where before and you're scratching your head, you're scratching your head, thinking, "Well, we need a player, a backup player for every single position." Mm. But Everton can't carry a backup player no. for every single position with with not having uh, European football. Mm. So that does help. Okay, when times are really tough and you need to call on players, it might not always be, ad- you know, advantageous if you haven't got a fully a fully stocked squad. But I think that's a big benefit though, bringing them in. You again, perfect age. You know, twenty three can grow into that yeah. position. He's, he's done well at Mainz. He's moved. He's ready for the next stage of his career. He's come to Everton. He's going in at that age. We're getting that youthful side. We spoke about it with Moise Keane coming in. You know, we've got Richarlison there. Andre Gomez is twenty, just turned twenty five or whatever. Twenty six. Luca Dean's twenty five. There's a lot. Michael Keane's twenty five, twenty six. Yeti, me. You know, they're all of a great age mm-hmm. now. If you if you remember a few years ago, we had. A lot of who were older, older players, you know, one of the older squads around. And then yeah. now, you know, Marcel Brands is trying to flip it. The and for other coming way. in for very, you know, similar yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, of course. Similar money to what we've released Ghana for, mm-hmm. probably on lower wages than Ghana. Oh, yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. You know, you look from that point of view, okay, listen, we'd all love to have kept Ghana, but for the age, it, it, it makes sense. It's a, it, you know, and the squad's starting to turn around and starting mm-hmm. to feel like it is getting younger. and Listen, we'll have to wait and see. Can't sit here and go, no. it's going to be amazing. No. People develop differently in the Premier League, but this is the player they wanted. They've gone and got him, and mm. that's that's all you can that's all you, all you can do is trust. This is a fella who Jürgen Klopp tried to buy for Liverpool last summer, yeah. and it didn't quite happen with, with what was happening because they've looked at him. So he's on. The, a lot of people are aware of him. He's a, you know, he's a good player. I think one thing, the, the bits are seen and... and is that he travels well with the ball. Yeah. So when the space opens up, he attacks That's it and he's, he's big and strong and he's really quick. Cover the ground very Really quick. quick. He doesn't, listen, he's ended up, he's, he's got eight goals in 215 well, games. So he's not, he's not someone. If people that's an are, indication of most players in that position. No, it is. So what, what I'm saying is people shouldn't have the expectation he'll come in and get goals because that's not his game. But what he does do really well is he travels through the lines with mm. the ball really well. He's Which quick. Is such an important Yeah, thing. and if you're his, that, his size, driving into yeah. space, it means it's uh, players have to go and engage him, yeah. which then frees up people like Bernard. and the, So, like, you've, you're absolutely right. We'll have to see how he settles in. It, it all sounds great yeah, yeah. on paper, but if he can transition his form, what he's shown in the Bundesliga, over to the Premier League for us and go in and do the job, 
Marco Silva wants them to do. And I suppose the beauty of it is we've got Fabian Delft there as well. Yeah. So Garner's going out, but we've got two lads yeah. now for that position, almost for that position. I know we see Delft a bit more like Gomez, yeah, yeah, but cool. Delft can do the fetching and the carrying for it as well. Don't forget as well, though, in, not ev- in every game you don't, don't always need... You know, every team that progresses, you want them to be a little bit more attacking, and of course, you Absolutely. want that insurance. But you don't, you're not, you're not always needing that that one player who is mm. entirely defensive. You need, with you know, Garner. Listen, Garner was Garner was brilliant. Well, one other, one other thing about him, his positional sense is really good, and he he tends to hold the position. Garner sometimes when yeah. putting fires out, and, and it would leave gaps every night. More often than not, he got back to cover yeah. the gap. But there was some gaps yeah. there where he does. Or what he's done in his career is filled his position really well and understand the position. I think that's key you, to have someone who can sit there and know his position, but is quick enough to get about the pitch. I think is a big thing. He'll bring something different to Garner. Some things I've said it before. Some things he won't be as good as Garner with, mm. but other things he'll be better. His long range passing's fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, we can only hope that he settles in quickly. But yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a good sign. It's a smart sign by Everton. And I think the biggest thing is that we've moved quickly to to plug the gap where Garner's gone. And, and I know, listen, we're heading towards the end of the transfer window. People have been nervous and worried, and, and rightly so in some cases. But is this further evidence to you to finish that we have to just trust what they're doing and just let it play out? Yeah, that's all. That's what else can you do? I mean, mm. what else can you do? You can only. You, we we are not privy. To every single thing no, that goes no. on at the club, you know, and all you can do is, I I honestly think that with the way the the money is at the club and the way it's tied up in other in other players that are not not needed, mm-hmm. that we will try and do deals towards the last week, mm-hmm. and I, I don't know whether this will be this is just a short term thing and it might only last for this summer and maybe next summer, mm-hmm. but because. Because we have got so much money tied up in other players, we are trying to get the best deals, and the best deals can't be done till the last ten days of the window. What I was thinking of was also as well is that because we're buying from European clubs, their windows and shut till yeah. the thirty first of August. So it's us trying to hurry them on. They'll sell when they're good and ready, and and we're seeing it. We've said this. We but, said that on the transfer show. Yeah. FFP is kicking in with a lot yeah. of clubs now, but, isn't it? But the question is, though, and I've had this before, and we had this last summer, is a lot of people scaremonger with the fact that our window shuts before theirs does. Mm. But they're relying on our money oh, they are, yeah. to go out and, and, and you know go and do their business mm. afterwards. So it's mm. all right saying, oh, I'm dead worried because all that business... It didn't happen last season. We'll wait and see what happens yeah. this summer. But... But they what? might take. They'll take this money and they'll go into France. Yeah, yeah. And they'll yeah. go and buy a player. But they've still got. They've got. Yeah, and they've, they've got, got another couple three. of weeks to go and do that. Mm. So that's. But they've got now got our, got our money. And don't forget. And this is not me being, you know, or mm. Premier League sensitive, but it is the Premier League money that tends that's to drive. Around, yeah. Apart from the big clubs, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from the big clubs, but it is the Premier League money that drives Europe. But it's they're the, more. They're more likely to keep you dangling. In the hope that you will just go, well, we've got a week left of our yeah. window. All right, then there's that extra four million everyone, everyone. because they because they've got the luxury of three more of course, weeks, yeah, of course. haven't they? But we've seen this with other. So we've seen we this with the Andre to... Gomez deal, yeah, of course. going down to the last day of the month in in um, May or was it June? Sorry, June. yeah, yeah, because they, they had to have payments and all this kind of thing. Well, he so. did it last year with the ad. They had Dave Harrison running around Barcelona yeah. on deadline, having to run between two things just in time to get it through because they hung on and hung on. And, and that's what it's about, isn't it? And I think sometimes us as fans, we want it done. And, and it, but all of this game playing and poker is going on and you've got a fella there who's, who's trying to juggle lots of plates of and, and keep the deals up. And sometimes so, it'll work and sometimes it of won't. Of course, he's not going to get everything, but, is he? Be, but we'll have to wait yeah, and see. Yeah. But for me, I think it's a really... Positive signing because it's it's a smart signing and to get him in quickly, so quick after losing Garner this week, I think it's a big thing for Everton. So hopefully he let the ground run. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Are you excited by this play? Do you, do you know him? Do you not know him? Or are you happy that we've managed to replace Garner quickly? Or are you just a bit like, well, we've lost one of our best players and yeah. Don't be like that. Be positive because let's... let's all be positive together let us know in the comment section below make sure you subscribe make sure you give this video a thumbs up it only takes a sec 
get over and join us on Patreon, where we are discussing Jean-Philippe Gabamon in more detail, live on Patreon. Become a patron, get over there, join us. See you later.